Hi Bobcats! In this video we're going to apply first order kinetics to nuclear reactions. Our objective is to calculate the half-life, the initial amount, the final amount, or the decay time given the other variables. This slide is a review of first order kinetics in one slide. Uh, the half-life is the amount of time needed for a sample to decay to one half of its original value. This is um, done by first order kinetics or all radioactive processes go by first order kinetics. So if you um, are not actually told that, but you're told that it's a radioactive process, you can just assume that it's first order kinetics. Our first order integrated rate law is that now the natural log of a sub t is equal to minus kt plus the natural log of a naught. And um, if you rearrange that equation to solve for a sub t, you end up with a sub t is equal to a naught e to the minus kt. Sometimes it's easier to use this alternate form that says that a sub t is equal to a naught times one half raised to the number of half lives. You calculate the number of half lives by taking the elapsed time and dividing it by how long a half life is. And then if uh, you were given k that you needed to find the half-life, you would use that the half-life is equal to the natural log of 2 divided by k. This diagram is showing what happens with radioactive decay processes and half-life. So the decay process that's happening is illustrated up here in the upper right that uh, a parent nucleus decays to give a daughter nucleus. And so when we're starting off at time zero, we have all parent nuclei. And then after one half-life has elapsed, half of those parent nuclei have turned into daughter nuclei. After another half-life has elapsed, um, half of the remaining parent nuclei have been converted to daughter nuclei. And then after yet another half-life has gone by, that amount has been reduced by half one more time. Anytime you're working one of these radioactive decay problems, they tend to specify how much of the radioactive isotope you have in a huge number of ways. Sometimes they'll do it by saying you have one gram of this radioactive isotope, so they'll tell you the mass. Other times they'll give you a measurement of radioactivity. Uh, sometimes they'll talk in terms of percent. Um, if they're doing percentage problems, the key point to keep in mind is that when time is equal to zero, you have 100% for your amount. So T equals zero, um, you have 100%. Uh, occasionally they'll give you the molarity. And so there are all sorts of different ways that the amount of your radioactive isotope can be specified. You can just use whatever unit they give you to plug into the first order equation. In this example, we're told that a radioactive isotope of phosphorus has a half-life of 14.3 days, and we're asked to find how long it takes for 95% of the sample to decay. So they're talking percentages, right? So what we know is that at t equals zero, the concentration of this isotope is equal to 100%. What we're asked to find is the time Oops, that was supposed to be a question mark. The time at which the concentration has decreased by 95%. Well, if it's decreased by 95%, we have 5% left. So we're trying to find time when the concentration is down to 5%. Okay, so um, we were given the half-life is 14.3 days. And in order to work this problem, I'd really prefer to do it in terms of the uh, rate constant. So k is given by the natural log of 2 over the half-life. So that would be the natural log of 2 divided by 14.3 days. And so if I run that through my calculator, natural log of 2 divided by 14.3, 
is equal to 0 0.04847 per day, right? So I've got days down in the denominator. Um, I'm carrying one extra sig fig through here around to three at the end. Okay, our first order rate equation says that the natural log, uh, sorry, our first order integrated rate law says that the natural log of A at time t is equal to minus kt plus the natural log of A naught. Well, what numbers do we have here? We have a number for A sub t, that's going to be 5%. We have a number for k, that's 0 0.04847. T is what we're looking for, so I'm going to go ahead and circle T to point out that's the thing we're trying to find. And then the natural log of A0 will be the natural log of 100, because A0 is 100. So if I'm going to rearrange this equation to get T isolated, um, I can subtract the natural log of A0 from both sides, and that will give me the natural log of A sub T minus the natural log of A0 is equal to minus kt. And so to get t by itself, I can divide both sides of this equation by minus k, and that will give me the natural log of A sub t minus the natural log of A0 divided by minus k is equal to t. Now there are several manipulations you can do to this equation depending on your comfort level with algebra and with logs. I'm going to leave it in this form and go ahead and plug in numbers, but feel free to simplify if you're comfortable with logs. Um, so the natural log of a sub t will be the natural log of 5. And then we're going to subtract the natural log of a0, which is the natural log of 100. And we're going to divide through by minus k, which is negative 0 0.04847 per day. So we have 1 over, 1 over days. So in the end, our unit will work out to be just plain days. And I don't really have enough room to write the answer down below, so I'm going to write it up above after I run that through my calculator. If I take 5 natural log minus 100 natural log, up there in the numerator, I get a, something really close to negative 3, and then I'm going to divide that by a negative 0 0.04847, and that's going to give me uh, 61.8 days. So after 61.8 days, the sample has decayed to 5%. Iodine-131 is used to treat thyroid disease and has a half-life of 8.1 days. If a person is treated with 10 micrograms of iodine-131, how much is left after 25 days? For this problem, since we're given half-life and we're looking for how much is left after a certain amount of time has passed, I prefer to use the equation that A sub T is equal to A naught times one-half raised to the number of half-lives. You can certainly use the standard form of the first-order integrated rate law. I just think that this form of, the, of that equation is a little bit easier to use. The one thing we're going to have to pre-calculate is the number of half-lives. I'm going to do that up here up at the top. The number of half-lives will be equal to the elapsed time, which is 25, divided by the length of a half-life, which is 8.1. So 25 divided by 8.1 is 3.086. Again, I'm carrying some extra sig figs through here. Um, we'll probably base our final answer off of the three sig figs and the uh, amount of iodine that we were given to begin with. Um, so A0 is equal to those 10 micrograms, and then we're going to have 1 half raised to the 3.086. And let's see. So I'm going to have 10 times 
raised to the 3.086, and that's going to be 1.18 micrograms. When you're working with something like this 1 half raised to the 3.086 power, um, depending on your calculator, there are lots of ways to work that. If you have that little caret key on your calculator, you can type in 0.5 caret 3.086. My calculator doesn't have that, but it has a Y to the X key, and so I use that key. Um, I, my particular calculator is a TI30XA. This is the type of calculator where if you're going to take the square root of something, you type in the number, like 25 and then you hit the square root key and it says 5. So uh, what I do on, on this is I would type in 0.5 and then I would hit the y to the x key and then I would type in 3.086 and hit equals. And so that's how I would enter this particular problem on that type of calculator. Carbon-14 dating gives a direct application of these first order kinetics of radioactive decay processes. Uh, the basic idea here is that carbon-14 is a radioactive form of carbon that is created by reactions that take place in the atmosphere. And so that carbon that's um, formed in the atmosphere gets taken up into plants by photosynthesis and then um, uh, other organisms eat those plants, and so carbon-14 gets incorporated into all living organisms. But once the organism dies, the amount of carbon-14 is fixed, and it will slowly decay. So if you take, if you measure the amount of carbon-14 that's present in a sample of a dead organism, such as a chunk of wood from um, an ancient artifact, and you compare the amount um, that's present in a, a modern living organism of the same type, um, such as a, a tree of the same type of wood, you can estimate the age of the dead organism. You can use our first order integrated rate law and solve for time, and that will tell you how old it is. Our objective is to calculate the half-life, the initial amount, the final amount, or the decay time given the other variables. We saw how you could do that with the standard first-order integrated rate law, or you could do it with the modified version um, that's solved for A sub t in terms of the number of half-lives that have passed by.